It is October 2022 and there's a lot going on. We have experts and economists saying that we'll enter recession in 2023. We have official government statistics saying we're already there, but government officials saying we're not in recession. We have a housing market suffering a slowdown due to high interest rates. And of course, we have massive debate about whether we're in a housing recession, a housing correction, or a seller's market. Yes, there's still people arguing we're in a seller's market. So it's time to cut through all that confusion and see what's actually happening with the housing market, both nationally and locally here in Spokane. My name is Phil Wells. I'm a real estate agent that likes to keep up to date with the market, and I want you to be as informed as possible too. In this video, we'll look at national pending home sales, we'll look at mortgage rates, mortgage application rates, and the Spokane market itself. We'll then move on to look at some macroeconomic and housing related news that stood out to me this month before trying to piece it all together at the end and see if we can make sense of the market as we see it right now in October 2022. So let's get into it. Looking first at national pending home sales for existing homes. Just a note on all the figures throughout this entire video, they are the latest figures that I can find, but there is often a lag when it comes to reporting data, particularly at the national level. So for example, these pending home sales that we're gonna be looking at are from August. We look at pending home sales rather than closed sales because it takes a while, usually about 30 to 45 days, to close a transaction. So closed sales in August would represent activity back from June, July time, whereas pending home sales in August give us the most up-to-date impression of what the market's doing. Contract signings were down only 2% month on month in August 2022. Year over year contract signings declined 24.2%, which represents 15 consecutive months of year over year sales declines. Where I am in the Western region, sales increased 1.4% month on month, and they declined 31.3% from the prior year. Those are massive year over year declines. Remember, we had an inventory shortage in 2021, where effectively 10 people were competing for one home, and now we're seeing only three quarters of the activity of then, when supply has more than doubled. Here's what the National Association of Realtors chief economist had to say about August's pending home sales. The direction of mortgage rates, upward or downward, is the prime mover for home buying, and decade high rates have deeply cut into contract signings. If mortgage rates moderate and the economy continues adding jobs, then home buying should also stabilize. This economist expects the economy to remain sluggish throughout the remainder of the year, with mortgage rates rising close to 7% in the coming months. Only when inflation calms down will we see mortgage rates begin to steady. As a result of the current interest rate environment and weaker economic activity, National Association of Realtors expects existing home sales to decline 15.2% in 2022, while new home sales are projected to fall by 20.9%. This same economist notes that limited housing inventory and almost non-existent distressed property sales have supported home prices. Overall, he forecasts prices will rise by 9.6% in 2022. In 2023, this economist foresees slower price appreciation and corresponding increases in sales as the year progresses. Next year, the annual median home price is expected to rise by only 1.2%. Home sales will pick up in the second half of 2023, but will be down by 7.1% overall. So it looks like despite the fact that prices are beginning to come down now, for the year of 2022, prices will still be up on a year-over-year -year basis. We'll have to see what happens in 2023 if prices continue to decline. This economist highlights the fact that inflation is the major economic force out there right now. The higher inflation is, the higher rates have to be, and fewer real estate transactions take place as a result. We'll touch more on inflation when we look at news articles later in this video. Let's move on to look at mortgage rates. Obviously, most people purchasing a home in the United States are doing so with the aid of a mortgage. So keeping an eye on mortgage rates gives us a really good idea of what demand is likely to do. Sticking with August for a second, rates at the start of August were at 5.05% and by the end of August they were at 5.99%. So as near as makes no difference, a full 1% increase there in rates in the month of August. The most recent rates that I could see have risen again to 6.95%, having risen above the 7% mark for the first time in decades. 
squeezing an already heavily squeezed buyer. I wanted to take a moment just to focus on these rates and highlight how damaging they are to home buyers right now, by way of an example. Let's look at someone trying to buy a median priced home right here in Spokane. That purchase price would be around 420,000. Last year when rates were at 3%, this home would have required an income of around $58,000 to purchase it. This assumes that the buyer can use their full allowable 43% debt to income ratio and is putting 10% down. When rates raise to 5%, that same buyer required an income of nearly $70,000 to purchase that same home. Now rates are close to 7%, a buyer will likely require an income of around $85,000 to purchase that same home. That's a nearly 50% increase in the income required to purchase a medium priced property in the space of only a few months. Now I wanted to point out that I'm not a lender and I'm sure there's more nuance that went into that calculation than I included, but I think it illustrates the point just fine. Now there is a counter argument to this of course. For example, the amount you'll pay in extra interest before you can refinance will likely be less than the amount you would have had to bid over ask when the market was much more competitive. But the counter argument to that counter argument is that ultimately you'll end up with less home as a result and may have to end up moving sooner than expected in order to get the home that you truly want. Now I wanted to take a look at mortgage application rates. This is a huge leading indicator for the overall housing market because it doesn't matter if rates are at 0% or 10%, what matters is how many people are applying for loans. Here's what the Mortgage Bankers Association had to say about mortgage applications in their most recent survey for the week ending October 5th. Mortgage applications decreased 14.2% from one week earlier. We were very recently at 22 year lows for mortgage applications. The idea that there's room to fall 14.2% from those levels is pretty incredible. Mortgage rates continued to climb last week, causing another pullback in overall application activity, which dropped to its slowest pace since 1997. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate hit 6.75% last week, the highest rate since 2006. The current rate has more than doubled over the past year and has increased 130 basis points in the past seven weeks alone. The steep increase in rates continued to halt refinance activity and is also impacting purchase applications which have fallen 37% behind last year's pace. No surprises there then, higher rates stifle economic activity. While that's not surprising, it's deeply unfortunate for those people wishing to buy homes, whether they're moving up the housing ladder or trying to get on the housing ladder for the first time. It's also frustrating for sellers who are seeing their homes sit on the market for much longer than expected, when their friends were able to sell their homes in the first weekend that they listed only a few months ago. Looking now at my local market, Spokane. Now I had to record this video before the market snapshot came out. I like to use the market snapshot because it's comparing apples to apples. I've been using the market snapshot for the last few years now. I was able to peek at some statistics and see that median home prices were around the 409 mark, but I don't have the full figures to compare in this video. What I expect to see in the Spokane market though is year over year sales declines, median home prices down slightly, and inventory up. I will be really interested to see whether new listings increase or decline. I have a feeling that sellers are gonna start to pull back and wait until next spring when hopefully rates have come back down and there's more buyers out there. I'll come back and leave a link to the market snapshot in the description to this video so you can see it for yourself. Now I wanted to take a look at a few news articles that stood out to me this month. Firstly, I wanted to focus in on the issue of inflation versus the Fed and also bring in some news from the UK which might suggest where the Fed is likely to head next. So the current inflation rate is currently 8.3%, with the last month reporting being August. And inflation rates are down from their highs in June. If we see the inflation rate continue to fall when September's figures are released on October 13th, then I will feel somewhat convinced that inflation is beginning to come down overall. And while it's got a long way to go before it meets the Fed's target of only 2% inflation, it may send a positive message to the overall market that further interest rate increases are unnecessary. 
The Fed funds rate has risen to 3.25% in the past month, and the Fed has warned of continued rate increases all the way up to 4.6% by 2023. This is of course sending a clear message that inflation is the Fed's top priority no matter the cost. Indeed, when asked about the housing market and the need for the housing market to cool, Powell stated, so we probably in the housing market have to go through a correction. So strong words there from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, who is willing to wipe out billions of dollars worth of home equity to combat inflation, it seems. But there is another side to all this tough talk coming from the Fed. We are in recession, and we have been since the start of 2022. So at the same time we have inflation going on, we have an economic downturn going on. To combat inflation, the typical playbook states that we need high interest rates and a tightening of the money supply. And to combat recession, we need low interest rates and a loosening of the money supply. The Fed can't do both. So can we time it perfectly so inflation comes down just in time that the Fed can lower rates and combat recession? Or are we going to see the Fed switch focus except inflation as it combats the greater moral evil of an overall economic downturn? The reason I bring up this point is this is exactly the scenario that just played out with the Bank of England in the UK. In the UK, inflation is around 10%. And up until very recently, the Bank of England has been singing from the exact same hymn sheet as the Federal Reserve, stating that inflation is the biggest thing that they need to combat. That was until the pound dropped significantly recently to near parity with the dollar, and the Bank of England decided to launch a round of quantitative easing to strengthen the pound. Some critics argue that the UK lost its nerve in the battle with inflation. Will the Fed eventually lose its nerve? How far do we have to descend into this recession before the Fed has to accept inflation and recognize that the economic downturn is the greater of the two moral evils? For what it's worth, I think the Fed is actually pursuing the right policy right now, although in my opinion, they should have raised rates much sooner instead of calling inflation transitory and crossing their fingers and hoping that it went away. Moving on to look at property values. As always, the housing market boils down to supply and demand. While yes, there might be multiple complex factors that weigh on each side of that equation, ultimately it is just supply and demand. So if demand is down, prices will fall, and that's exactly what's happening right now with these high interest rates. This article from Fox Business reports on figures from mortgage analytics firm Black Knight. Median home prices fell 0.98% in August, from a month earlier following a 1.05% drop in July. Together they represent two straight months of significant pullbacks after more than two years of record-breaking growth. So you could argue that no one is winning in this market, but as always the one group that is winning in this market are the people buying in cash. If you're a cash buyer right now, you'll likely get a property for below list price and with next to no competition. I've been working with a few cash buyers in the past few months and all those transactions have been at a discount to list price. As always, cash is king. Next, I wanted to discuss the housing shortage. While yes, we have no buyers wanting to buy homes, we did previously have a inventory shortage, which many people point to as the reason that home prices grew so much. Apparently across the country there are 16 million vacant homes. Now, depending on which article you read, the US is short 1 to 5 million homes. So that seems like an easy fix to me. Of course, I know there are nuances in every single case. There are countless reasons someone might keep a home vacant. It might be a second home, they might have just inherited it. There might be complex issues relating to taxes, title or litigation that are in the process of being worked out. But reading this article gave me hope that maybe, just maybe, we could see a housing market in the next couple of years where inventory matches demand, rates normalize, and people can do normal things like move up the housing ladder or get on the housing ladder without incurring immense stress and expense at the same time. So to that end, if you own a vacant property in the Spokane area, please feel free to reach out to me to discuss an exit plan. I've dealt with plenty of complicated cases in the past. Everything from missing lien holders to errors in recording decades ago. I have great contacts with real estate attorneys and title officers that can help. Lastly, I wanted to bring you some Spokane specific news. The big brains at City Hall have shut down building in Leitar Valley for six months until such time as they can ensure new development plans pays a proportionate share of costs incurred from the resulting infrastructure needs. 
This cart before the horse approach to public policy comes at a time when Spokane is short of homes and builder sentiment is low. This hardly sends the right message that Spokane is open for business and is committed to growth. I'll leave a link to this article in the description to this video so you can see which city representatives are involved in this decision. Now let's try and piece all this information together and see if we can summarize the market as we see it right now in October 2022. The big news is, of course, that interest rates are at their highest level for decades, having peaked above the 7% mark. Inflation is still far, far too high, though it is coming down from its highs in June. It currently sits at 8.3%. And of course, home prices are coming down. According to research from Black Knight, they're down 2% over the last two months. Nationally, the most recent report on pending home sales show that pending home sale contracts are down marginally on a month-on-month -month basis, but down massively year over year. In my opinion, the market is very unsettled and very unhappy right now. As you would imagine, when you have a massive external factor weighing on buyers' pockets, namely the Federal Reserve and mortgage rates. If you are a buyer right now and you can stomach the current rates in the anticipation that you'll be able to refinance in the future, then you will face nearly no competition and you'll have the choice of homes. If you're a seller, know that people are buying homes, but it will take you a lot longer to get there than it would have taken you last year. You will have to prep your home much more carefully for sale and you'll have to market your home much more aggressively. You may also have to come up with an aggressive strategy that includes some price drops in order to sell your home. That's it for this video. I hope you gained from the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. That really does help me out. If you're looking at buying and selling in the Spokane area, please reach out to me. Give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email, and I'd be honored to work with you. Until the next video, my name is Phil Wells, and thank you for watching.